Now I'm going to have to cut this a little bit short because, you know, again, I do want this to be a quick start guide and not a massive um, guide for, you know, how to use Fusion 360 all inclusive. But um, one really quick thing I'm going to do is insert this piece into my current design here. And uh, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to right click this one here and do insert into current design. Hmm, it's not going to let me. Well, that's not a big deal. I'm actually going to click, click this one, right click and do move. And I'm just going to move this um, to kind of fit into this piece I have here. And in this component, I'm going to get rid of all these small tubes here. And I'm going to rotate this around. There we go. Um, so another cool thing you can do is you can import objects from other sources. One of the really easy ones to do is go to insert here and do a uh, McMaster car component. Okay, and now what you can do is you can like go to screw bolts, um, you know, socket cap screws. Let's say you want to do a stainless steel button head socket cap screw. You can click on this one. You can change it by each thread size, by length, uh, full threads or partial threads. Um, I don't really know what size I'm looking for. I'm just going to click one here. And I'm going to go to product detail. And you can do any sort of uh, import uh, model file that you'd like. I'm just going to choose 3D step and click save. And what that's going to do is actually throw that component right into here. And because I'm working at such an odd scale, a really large scale, this is actually a really small screw. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and position this and just kind of plop it into one of these holes here. So one way to do that is just kind of rotate this up 90 degrees. And I'm going to go to my top view here. And I'm going to choose to kind of place that really small screw. Let's put it in this one here. I'm going to kind of zoom in and see it. And kind of find the center of that circle a little bit, hit OK. Now I need to scale this object up. So what I'm going to do is two things actually. Number one is I already know if I go to modify and scale, it's going to need a point to scale from and it's going to give me a really odd point that's not really in the middle of the object. So as I roll over this, you're going to see it's like, oh, here's a point and here's a point, but there's no point like right in the middle. Not a big deal. All I have to do is go to construct point at the settle center of a circle or a sphere. I'm going to capture the position of this thing for now. And I choose that and it went ahead and gave me a point right in the middle that I can choose. So what I can do is go to the top again, go to modify, scale, choose that body. And it already has a point selected that it just grabbed one. I'm going to X that out and then with point I'm going to grab that point we created. And now I can scale from the center of that object here. Get a little bit easier on you. And it's going to scale it. And again, if I had been working real life scale, this would be working a lot easier. But because I'm just kind of winging it, I kind of have to do this. So it's kind of sloppy. But now that I have that, I can right click and do a move, grab that body, kind of move this thing into place. And of course, you're going to want to check it from the other views as well. So we'll go to the right here, or the front. And we'll need to kind of position this here. If you want to see how deep into this object you are, you can go into display settings, visual style, shaded with hidden edges. And you can kind of see you know, where this thing is going to end up. Go back to the top here. So we've kind of embedded it a little bit and put it in here and click OK. And there you go. And it's actually, let's go back to visual style, uh, shaded with visible edges. So um, we've got the screw kind of lined up in there. And if you want to, you can copy and paste that around. We've shown you that. Um, you can go ahead and it's made its own component here. So you can go ahead and name this whatever you'd like. And now what we can do is go ahead and get into rendering. So before I do that, I'm going to click F and go ahead and uh, fill it the uh, last couple of things in here just to kind of smooth these things out. And I probably should have filleted these things first, but we can do it after the fact, I believe. Okay. And okay, that looks good enough. So what I'm going to do is go in here and render this thing. Actually, one more. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go and render this thing. So what I can do is go to Model, Render. And that'll take us into kind of a basic rendering mode. So I'm going to click this little appearances material ball here. And I'm going to go into the library here. I'm going to choose some metal. So I'm going to do aluminum, uh, anodized glossy blue for this one. I'm just going to click and drag that out. And then I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and keep polished steel for that one. I'll do aluminum polish for the center one here. And let's go ahead and choose some other stuff here. There's a ton of things in here. Uh, we can do a translucent plastic or a transparent plastic, painted stuff, wood. Let's make this top one uh, transparent plastic, sure, why not? Okay, so we've got that all in there. We're gonna go ahead and hit close. And if you wanted to kind of do a beauty render, you can actually click this button, which enables ray tracing. 
and that'll go ahead and do a beauty render here. If you want to change some settings, you can go to scene settings here, and you can change a little bit of your exposure here. Um, I haven't found a way to bring in your own like image-based lighting image or anything like that, but you can change the solid color of your environment or change it to the environment lighting. Uh, all sorts of cool things. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And uh, just like Octane and uh, those type of renderers, the longer you or key shot, the longer you let this thing sit, the prettier it's going to look. So you can kind of just let that sit here and render. And if you want to move it around, uh, it's probably going to take a little bit longer to update. And if you want to turn this off temporarily while you're moving around, you can certainly do that. So again, this is just kind of a quick start guide, quick and dirty basics. I haven't gone over a ton of stuff. Um, we haven't done any inspecting, measuring, cutting through, um, doing any thickened shell, solid bodies, uh, structural supports. Those are really fun and cool to do. Uh, duplicating with and without instancing. There's kind of some things you need to know about that. Uh, rendering with decals. We hardly did any real T, what do they call T-spline modeling. Any uh, There's a lot of cool pipe stuff you can do. Um, a lot of form modeling you can do we didn't go into. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this render uh, for now. But if you want, I mean, as you're rendering, it does a lot of cool stuff too. Like it'll capture all these different views. You can go into drawings and create orthographic drawings of your stuff as opposed to rendered views. Uh, and then you can do a three-quarter rendered view for your orthographic. All sorts of really cool stuff you can do really quickly. Um, I'm going to go in here to modeling here. Another really cool thing you can do is go look at what other people have modeled. Uh, in a place like GrabCAD, for example. I um, mean, you go through here, and I just did a search for engine. And there's lots of really cool engines that people have modeled. You can download these things as whatever file they did. And if you want to import these things, all you have to do is upload them. And Fusion 360 will convert just about any file I can think of uh, to a workable file within Fusion itself. Um, in fact, I think if I go back out of here, yeah, I've got some stuff I've just kind of opened and looked at. Um, here's a really cool one. So uh, I actually import double click it. So I guess if you do a double click it, it'll go ahead and import it into the open file. It won't open it up. So I misspoke when I said that. Uh, but no big deal. Let's go ahead and turn these things off here. And uh, just for fun, let's go and render this thing. So uh, lots of really cool things you can do off uh, run off GrabCAD and go check those things out. I'm talking about joints at all, and a joint's a really cool thing. You do as built joints. Uh, you can do lots of constraints. Um, you can kind of add a lot of parameters to those joints to tell them which way to rotate, how far to rotate, and how the, how the interlocking mechanisms kind of work together if you want to get into that kind of stuff. As well as just getting the uh, meshes out of Fusion. I talked a little bit about that on how to you know export an STL, but there's a lot of different ways you can get ex um, objects exported out of Fusion, make them workable in other programs such as ZBrush, Moto, Maya, Max, all that good stuff. So a lot more stuff we haven't gone over, and eventually I'll get to that stuff when you get to their project-based stuff, um, which you can check out uh, later online. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention uh, 3D printing. You can do, uh, you can hook up Mesh Mixer to this. You can send meshes directly to Mesh Mixer, have it all cut up, and you know, do your support system and all that good stuff within Mesh Mixer and export that, and go ahead and 3D print all this stuff. So a lot of really, really cool stuff you can do. But anyways, I hope this is enough information to kind of get you started. Again, quick start guide, not an all-inclusive um, tutorial guide. And in fact, if you go up here to File, I'm sorry, uh, Help. You can do learning and help, step-by-step -step tutorials, what's new. All of these are really good resources to go ahead and start learning Fusion uh, from people who are actually really good at using it, professionally using it, not like me who just kind of wings it to just kind of model some really quick hard-edge stuff. Um, so a lot of resources available to you online.